In just a moment, hear Best Plays. First, though, this is Bob McKenzie with a note about some of your weekday favorites on this station. For comedy, Monday through Friday, we feature the rapid-fire wit of Bob Hope, while Dave Garraway drops by for an informal 15-minute visit, complete with some of your favorite records. Later in the day, One Man's Family and News of the World are both featured on NBC. And for your future reference, on June 22nd, we'll welcome back Bud Collier and Break the Bank for daytime quiz Monday through Friday on these stations. Right now, it's Best Plays on NBC. From New York, where the American stage begins, NBC presents Best Plays, transcribed with John Chapman. Best Plays, a series of hour-length dramas selected from the outstanding successes of the New York stage. Now, John Chapman, drama critic of the New York Daily News, is here to introduce Walter Slezak and Carmen Matthews in Autumn Crocus by C.L. Anthony. <laughs> Mr. Chapman. Thank you, Fred Collins, and welcome, audience. Our play is about a spinster on the loose, if that isn't a contradiction in terms. I don't know why it should be, but in the theater, any woman, young or not, who is nice enough and attractive enough to be married but isn't is called a spinster. And she usually is a schoolteacher. These ladies are a favorite subject for playwrights, and we have had many good comedies and dramas about them. Our best play for this performance, Autumn Crocus, is one of the good ones and one of the gayest. It was the first professional writing by an English actress named Dodie Smith. And although Autumn Crocus was a hit both in London and New York, Miss Smith was so doubtful about its outcome, and its income for that matter, that she signed her comedy with an assumed name, C.L. Anthony. The pseudonym was a lucky one, so she kept it for many years. In her first play, Miss Smith allowed herself to wonder what might happen if she exposed a nice young English tripper, or tourist, to the charms of a Tyrolean innkeeper in loud suspenders. Our gentleman for this performance is Walter Slezak, whose career has included being a musical comedy hero, a Nazi villain in many movies, and, currently on Broadway, an amiable crook in the comedy My Three Angels. Our lady tourist is Carmen Matthews, one of our favorite comedians on this Best Plays series. Our scene, of course, is an inn somewhere in the Austrian... ...dish lady carrying a Baedeker. And the other was a young English lady wearing a very unbecoming brown felt hat. Oh, Edith, do let's stay here. It's really very charming. Uh, it does look clean, but so did that place last night. Oh, they even have a piano. Well, <laughs> let's hope no one plays it. Oh, I think it's rather sweet. And it's only for one night. One night can seem like a year. Last night certainly did. Not a wink till daylight lying there watching the walls. I meant to stay awake, but somehow I dropped off. Yes, Fanny, and it seems so utterly unfair that I got bitten and you didn't. Ladies, would you like to look at some rooms? What are you doing with that luggage? I bring it in for you. Well, thank you, but we're not at all certain that we're staying. Kindly take them back to the bus. The bus has gone. Oh, but we told the driver to wait for us. He's very sorry, but he's late already because he wait for you at three hotels and you do not stay. Oh. If you do not like it here, there's another bus in an hour that goes to Innsbruck. Oh, but we don't want to go back to Innsbruck. Then you stay here. You will like it. I insist on a room with a bath. We have 12 baths. Why? Why not? <laughs> you uh, must not think us rude, but we've not found many baths lately, and uh, in such a small hotel... Oh, I see. <laughs> but this is not only a hotel. Here you come to be cured. There are special salts in the water. We have Heilbäder. Health bath? Yes, well, I suppose we can have them plain. I don't want any health baths. Oh, gewiss. You should have them quite unhealthy. Oh, just so it's a bath. We've had rather a dreadful experience. Last night in Innsbruck, we stayed at a very old hotel. Oh, very interesting and historical. Lots of kings and people had slept there, but... Well, not very clean, I'm afraid. Um... Animals came out of the walls. Animals? Well, not exactly. Um, creatures. My friend is referring, quite unnecessarily, I think, to insects. 
Ones that in England would never be met with in any but the lowest quarters. I myself have never seen one before. Then how did you know it? Oh, there you are, Edith. I told you I'm quite sure it was a ladybird. It has not a ladybird's habits. <laughs> However, I prefer not to discuss it. Will you give me your assurance that there is nothing of the kind in this inn? Certainly. Unless it came with you. Really? Well, I, I don't think you need to be afraid. We examined our clothes most carefully. That's good. If you bring one with you, it's nothing. It's all right. But if you bring two, perhaps it is not all right. Oh, please, do let us drop the subject. In England, such a thing is quite unmentionable. I'm sorry. But you mentioned it first. Oh, I'm sure we shall be very comfortable here. <laughs> oh, this is such a darling room. Uh, do you play the piano? Very dear, do let's get settled. I'm sure Herr... Uh... Steiner. Andrea Steiner. Well, I'm sure Herr Steiner plays the piano delightfully, but we can neither eat nor sleep on it. I understand. I show you the rooms. You would like a big, quiet room in the back? With a balcony? Yes, with a nice balcony. <laughs> Come, I'll show you. In addition to Alaric, my fiancé, and myself, there were two other guests already staying at the inn. They were Vicar Main, one of those gentle, easily flustered English clergymen, and his sister, also gentle, also easily flustered, also English. Alaric and I took great delight in shocking her whenever she came by, by assuming all sorts of outrageous attitudes and philosophies. <laughs> My dear Audrey, you're drinking too much beer. You'll get spots on your nose if you drink too much. <laughs> That'll be your trouble. I can't see my nose. Oh, have some, Alaric. You might as well. You've got spots already. What a libel. You know perfectly well that I got bitten by a mosquito last night. Mm. Good morning. Oh. oh, hello. Good morning. I, I won't disturb you if I sit here in the garden. Oh, not at all. Alaric, did I tell you I heard from Mother? No. What did she have to say? Evelyn and Justin are going to be married. Nonsense. Justin would never be so immoral. He has a very highly developed sense of responsibility. So as Evelyn taught herself. All she wants is a home, husband, and children. Don't malign the girl. There must be some mistake. No, no, it's just the sort of disgusting thing Evelyn would do. I expect that she'll have one of those indecent public weddings, too. <laughs> uh, did, did you say something, Miss May? No, but I, I do wonder if I might ask your advice about the bus schedule. I rather thought of going over to Gleeders this afternoon to do a little shopping. You'll uh, find out all about the buses at the post office. It's oh. a very nice post office. They sell stamps and things there. And you'll just have time to go before lunch. <laughs> Shall I? Which, which way is it? Well, go around the back of the church and over the little bridge... Then go along the mill stream till you find a path on your left. You can't miss it. Can't I? Do you know it's the most extraordinary thing, but whenever people say to me you can't miss it, I somehow do miss it. Still, I, I suppose it'll be all right. Well, thank you so much. <laughs> Alaric, you are a beast. Why? You sent her right round the village. Well, even that'll only take her five minutes. Anyhow, I felt it was time she went. If she looks at me any more in her playful way, I shall either scream or strip. <laughs> Something will have to be done about her. Last night, she was within inches of death. Do you know, she opened and shut her door six times. When I sat by your room for that uh, book, she looked absolutely scandalized. <laughs> she makes me feel like a chorus girl weekending at Brighton. Do you know, I was becoming absolutely furtive. Look here. Let's go and meet her brother and tell him to talk to her. We don't know where he is. Well, he's just behind the church, reading an Edgar Wallace novel. How do you know he's reading an Edgar Wallace novel? He's sure to be. Vickers on holiday always read Edgar Wallace. Herr Steiner? Yeah, Fräulein. Uh, you're staying here? <laughs> Why, yes. But I have not... Oh, forgive me. I am stupid. <laughs> I did not recognize you without the glasses. Oh. And you have done something to your hair. Charming. Oh, thank you. Where's the other lady? She's taking a bath. I think she's a most prickly lady. What? Oh, well, I, I'm afraid she was rather rude, but we'd had such a dreadful night in Innsbruck. 
And then you see, she has all the managing to do. I'm so silly about it. Perhaps that makes her manner a little prickly. She takes care of you? Oh, yes. I should never dare to come abroad without her. Then if she's good to you, I will not call her any more prickly. <laughs> she's really very nice. After all, we couldn't guess we were coming to such a charming hotel. You like it? I'll show you our village this afternoon. We have a very gay and lovely little church and a skeleton in the glass case. Oh, I shouldn't like that. Oh, but he's most cheerful and bright with fine clothes and, and rings on his fingers. Oh, what a horrible idea. You think so? To me, it's good. When I see him, I think how lucky I am to be alive. <laughs> and when I come outdoors, the sun seems brighter, the meadows so green and the mountains more high. <laughs> and yet, God lets you climb them. <laughs> Poor skeleton. No mountains for him. But he has a fine glass case. Oh, but enough talk of skeletons. <laughs> It'll spoil your lunch. I don't think it will. I'm awfully hungry. <laughs> oh, and lunch is so late. Lisa, wann wird eigentlich gegessen? In ein paar Minuten. Uh, miss, this is... Uh... Du liebe Zeit, die Suppe kocht über. <laughs> the soup boils over. Oh. I'm sorry, lunch is so late. I, I don't know your name. Gray. Fanny Gray. Well, we'll fill it in on the register. Oh. We have just time before lunch. Oh, Edith always does those. I, I can never really understand them. Oh, I help you. Now, here. Oh. Here we put your name. Fanny Gray. Yes. Next. Where were you born? Uh, Norwich. Oh, I remember. There's a big cathedral. Oh, you've been there? Oh, yes. And to Salisbury and Canterbury. Oh. Very lovely, very peaceful. <laughs> time is rested there. But they are full of old prayers. There's no room for new. In towns, one does not want to pray. I did not ever pray in London. Were you there long? Nearly a year uh, to learn English. No wonder you speak so well. You think so? Ah, <laughs> That's good. But see, <laughs> I talk all about me and Fräulein Fanny cannot say a word. Now you'll tell me about yourself on the register. Now where do you live? Eccles. It's near Manchester. Eccles. Is that a gay town? There's some good music. Well, that's something. <laughs> Now I must put down your profession. Or perhaps you're just a lazy lady. Oh, no, I'm a schoolmistress. Uh-oh. -uh. <laughs> Now I know. Know what? The spectacles. You wear them to frighten the children, to make you more severe. Oh, of course not. And I don't have to be severe. I, I only teach the little ones. And what do you teach them? Mm, singing, needlework, a little of everything. I'm not very clever. I haven't any degrees. Degrees? Oh, you get them for passing examinations. You can't get really good jobs without them. Edith's an M.A. Oh. That is very great. Well, it's very important she teaches real things, mathematics, science. She does not teach the little ones. Oh, no. I'm so glad. <laughs> I can just see her. Which is twice two? You do not know? <laughs> oh, what nonsense. She's, she's not a bit like that. All right. Now, next on the register, we put if you are single or married. Oh. A single. Single. But uh, you are engaged. No. What makes you think so? I, I think it is strange that you're not, that's all. And now, now we put your age. Twenty-nine. Uh-uh. That's naughty. The police will come for you. You're making fun. What do you mean? You are not so old, not even with the spectacles on, are you 29? <laughs> oh, yes, I am, <laughs> quite. <laughs> really? But you look so young. Oh, perhaps it is because you are so much with little children. Well, that finishes the register. Oh, no, there's one more space. What's that for? That is the date you leave, but we won't fill that in now. Oh. You will like it here. You'll stay a long, long while. Well, I'm afraid we can't. You see, we're going to Italy tomorrow. Tomorrow? Yes, we have to meet a friend in Venice, Miss Travers, our geography mistress. She's rather elderly. We wouldn't disappoint her. Then let your friend go and meet her, and you stay here. All alone? <laughs> oh, I couldn't really. I, I must go tomorrow. Perhaps you will change your mind. <laughs> I think not. <laughs> Maybe... We will see. Now, 
Well, remember, Alaric. Be kind, but firm with him. Remember, he's a vicar. Well, I'm not exactly sure how to go about telling a man that his sister is a peeping Tom. I'll help you. I say there, have you been in the church? Uh, not yet. Well, you really ought. There's a skeleton in a glass case with rings on its fingers. Uh, well, we'll go see it. Uh, but first, um, there's a problem we've got to discuss. Uh, very well. Uh, your sister. What about my sister? Uh, we're afraid she has a curiosity complex. She opens doors. Whose doors? Oh, her own, of course. But even that can be tactless. When it's done uh, frequently. Six times. Look here, are you implying that my sister was spying on you? Well, she seemed to find the corridor very interesting every time I passed last huh? night. Well, I... I really don't know what to say. Well, don't say anything, at least not to us. Just trot off and explain to your sister. But, but she's lived a very sheltered life, I... I hardly She's like obviously to, uh, got a very dangerous curiosity complex. She might do anything. Possibly assault Herr Steiner. What an outrageous suggestion. Not at all. Do you know anything about psychoanalysis? Certainly not. Well, you ought to. You're in charge of the souls of your parishioners. You ought to know something about them. Now, look here. Uh, would you like us to lend you a few books on analysis? You'll find it a great help in the parish. Uh, well, well, I, I hardly feel like tackling anything heavy... But I have just finished an Edgar Wallace novel. Uh, yes. Uh, we'll start you on something light. But on one condition, that you take your sister in hand at once. Well, perhaps I will. But, uh, no, I, I don't promise to say one word until it's cooler. Well, as long as you get it over by sundown. As it turned out, the vicar didn't have a chance to talk with his sister before sundown that evening because she hadn't returned from Gleda's. Dinner time passed, and she wasn't back. Then the last bus arrived, and she wasn't on it. Finally, as it was growing late, the two English ladies retired to their room, and still Miss Maine hadn't come back. It's really very strange and, and most unlike her. Are you sure she went to Gleda's? Oh, quite. I saw her on the bus myself. Well, perhaps she's at the cinema. There is no cinema at Gleda's. I suspect the shops. Florence is an inveterate shop gazer. My dear sir, there are only four shops in Gleda's, and three of them are butchers. Good evening. Florence! Good Miss Maine! What on earth's happened? Have you had an accident? I've been lost. Oh, come sit down, Miss Maine. Lisa, yeah. come here. You're Vastin. Bring coffee if you're Miss Maine. So forth, Schwarzen coffee. What's happened to you, Florence? Have you been criminally assaulted? Edward, will you kindly stop asking me questions? I tell you, I've been lost. But, but your, your dress is torn. Your sleeves. Oh, those, I, I cut them off. Cut them off? I was hot. Surely there's another... My dear Edward, I can assure you the sleeve's quite unbearable when you're climbing up a mountain on all fours. What were you doing on a mountain on all fours? I was taking a shortcut home. But there is only one way from Gleda's besides the road. That is by the Himmelshütte. That's where I was. But that's 2,000 meters up. The signpost said it'd only take two and a half hours. Well, it isn't really far as the crow flies. Unfortunately, I don't happen to be a crow. I crawled most of the way. I know, it's very steep. I should call it the vertical. Do you know, I had to go on my hands and knees. Then why didn't you turn back? Because I kept thinking that I was there. When I got there, I wasn't. I was just where I was. Mountains are very deceptive. <laughs> I know. I know. Mind you, I was surprised at my own agility. I really think I could have managed quite well if it hadn't... If I hadn't had my clothes on... Oh dear. Do you know... Do you know what I did with my things? I strapped them together with my belt and I dragged them. Well, where are they now? I left them at the inn. So you got to the top. Bravo. It was. Very bravo. That's where I cut my sleeves off while I was drinking my beer. But you don't drink beer. Oh, yes, I do. After climbing a mountain, I drink anything. Here's the cafe for the time. Thank you. Name this up. Yeah, here. Perhaps you will drink some coffee now. Thank you. I cannot understand why you took so long to get back. 
I was at the bar in the inn for quite a long time, and then I started back here and took another shortcut. Through a little wood. Well? It was a round wood. Perfectly round. And it was all middle. It was completely surrounded by cows. But uh, uh, weren't you frightened of the cows? Certainly not. I like cows. They had bells. I thought I could find my way out of the wood by going in their direction. Oh, splendid. You're quite a boy scout. That's what I thought, but it wasn't feasible. Most unfeasible. They moved. What moved? The cows. Do you know, I had to do the last bit of the mountain sitting down. Oh, how very painful. It was most painful. Uh, well, uh, well uh, you're, uh, you're safe now, and, um, and you'd better go straight to bed. Yes, quite. Do you know, I, I don't feel quite normal. I think it must be the sun. In another part of the house, the young English lady had discovered the beauty of seeing the Tyrolean mountains at night from the balcony of the Rotahish. Fanny, dear, do come in. You catch cold. Nonsense. There isn't a breath of wind. Do come out a minute. It's so lovely. Do you suppose this balcony will hold the both of us? <laughs> of course. Everybody uses them here. Yes, and I expect nobody repairs them. They all look as if they were just about to fall off. I... Can you smell drains? No, can you? I suppose not. But somehow, I always expect to smell drains on the continent. <clears throat> I can't see a thing. Your eyes will get used to it soon. It's the mountain that makes it so dark. I can't see any mountain. You can't see anything else? That's all, Mountain. Right up to where the stars begin. Is it? You're not usually so observant. I know. But I love this place. Couldn't we stay? Just a little while. We could send Miss Travers a telegram. But we've booked our rooms, and you know we've only just enough money to do all we'd planned. But need we do it all? Oh, I'm so tired of traveling in hot carriages, and it's so lovely here. We could do Venice next year. Oh, you know perfectly well we shan't be able to come abroad next year. Just see how long it's taken us to save up for this holiday. And that's all the more reason why I want to stay. Oh, I can't bear the thought of leaving all this beauty forever. And I can't bear to think of missing Venice. Then let me stay here alone. Fanny, you're not serious. Yes, yes, I am. I'd be quite all right. You, you could collect me on the way back. Oh, Fanny, don't be idiotic. You know our tickets are booked. We don't touch Innsbruck on the way back. We could access the tickets. Well, if you've come into a fortune, I haven't. And you'll have to pay for your room in Venice. You can't afford to stay here as well. Oh, I could manage somehow. Manage, indeed. You never manage anything. You leave it all to me. I suppose it is selfish of me to want my own way after you've been so generous... Anyhow, it's not a question of being selfish. The whole thing is impossible. Oh, now, for goodness sake, let's go to bed. I'm tired out. All right. I, I won't be a minute. Put the light out and I'll slip in without waking you. I don't see why you want to stay out here at all. Just to say my prayers to the stars. Oh, what a baby you are. Well, don't be long. Well, Aunt Fanny... <gasps> Oh, you startled me. Where are you? Here on the next balcony. I, uh, I didn't know that was your room. It is not. Here's only a landing. I, I must go in. You're tired? No, Cold? no. No. Then stay a while. It's yet so early, not ten o'clock. Why did you come? Perhaps I too wish to say good night to the stars. <laughs> but you can see them from the garden or the road. But they are especially nice ones here. Look, there is a... What do you call it in English? <laughs> a shooting star. A shooting star. Did you wish? Yes. I too. Perhaps we wish the same wish. Miss Fanny, why don't you stay here? I can't. You see... I don't earn very much money. Edith's helped me to pay for this holiday. You mean you cannot afford to stay here? 
Oh, will you not be our guest? Oh, oh, I couldn't. Besides, it isn't that so much. It's, well, just that it would spoil everything for her. I, I can't do that. She's been so good to me. I see. It makes it difficult. I wish she could get just a little ill in the night. Oh, but that would be wicked. You mustn't wish that. Oh, I don't mean anything bad. Just a little illness. Perhaps she could sprain her ankle. What, in the night? Uh, that's not easy. Oh, I don't care what happens to her, if only you stay. You're not like anyone who ever came here. <laughs> but I'm so ordinary. Oh, no. There is magic with you. When you first came this morning, I hardly saw you. Just a little brown lady with a quiet voice. But when you took the glasses off, you were quite different. Like someone in a fairy tale. Mm, I'm too old to be in a fairy tale. You will never be old. You're imprisoned in the spring. It's all around you. Can you not smell the lilacs? Perhaps it's my scent. I, I got some in Paris. <laughs> no, it's not that. It's the ghost of lilacs that I smell. In the spring, there's a big white bush under this window. You have bewitched it, and it blooms again. Oh, I can almost see it. How wonderful it must be here in spring. Oh, it is most marvelous. Fields and fields of flowers, and the air is like wine. Even now, when you're high above the world, there comes a lightness in your heart. Would you not like to climb the mountains? Oh, I would. <laughs> but I don't suppose I ever could. With me, you would be quite safe. We would put some nails in your silly shoes. <laughs> now, there's a meadow high on the Himmelsberg. There we could climb. It's lovely there, and the only sound is distant tinkling of cowbells in the valley. Oh, how lovely. Will you not come with me? Just for one day? Oh, if only I could. I've always longed to be in the mountains. There's a picture in our room in Eccles, only a cheap print, but it shows a little village right under the hills. Often in the evenings, when I'm tired of correcting exercises, I try to get right into it, to climb from the village to the mountain top. Then I shut my eyes, and sometimes I can imagine it all. The sunlight, the wind, and then stillness, silence, and a sort of peace. Uh, not the peace you get in churches or anywhere in the valleys. It's somehow different. I know. It's not the peace of the earth. It steals a little from the skies. Yes, that's it. But how silly of me. I, I'm only imagining it. I've never really been on a mountain. Oh, but you must. It's wrong not to take the little gifts life offers. Think how long you will be shut in the dull town while here there's a little freedom. I think that is a rare thing for you. I think you will stay. Danny! Uh, I'm just coming. I must go now. But you will stay tomorrow. No, I don't know. I must. I'll, uh, I'll talk to Edith again in the morning. Oh, that's no good. You must make up your own mind. I want to stay so much. Belly. Anon, anon, goodness. <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> oh, nothing you wouldn't understand. I, I, I'm very silly. <laughs> Just something from a play. Oh, I don't know what's happened to me tonight. I, I feel lightheaded. I, I think it's the air. Ah, oh, Miss Fanny, you shall laugh on the mountains. Listen, I have an idea. Why don't you get up early and climb a little way? Then you will see how lovely it is, how right it is for you to stay. Oh, yes. That would be wonderful. You could climb to the first shrine of the Himmelsberg. That wouldn't take you long. Where is it? Look, you can see it from out there. The little light. Oh. Always it burns. Oh, but that must be miles away. No, you wouldn't see the light. It's not much more than half an hour away. There's a little path that leads from the meadow. You will take it? I will, I will. Oh, how lovely. At least I shall have that to remember. Oh, what time is it light? At six. But you shouldn't start until the sun is up. It's too cold. Now start at seven. Even then it's chilly. I will leave you a big warm shawl at your door. Fanny, Fanny. Oh, coming. You are so right for this place, Miss Fanny. I'm sure you will stay. No, oh, I don't know. I, I feel quite mad. I must go now. Listen. Miss Audrey is playing. Can you hear? Yes. A lullaby for Fanny. But don't sleep too long. 
I'm afraid you will not wake up in time. I always wake when it's light, even if I go to sleep again. Danny! What would she say if she knew I was talking to you? Oh, but it's most respectable. See? I cannot even touch your hand. Can I? Reach. Just the tips of our fingers. I really must go now. Look. The little shrine is waiting for you in the morning. Good night. Good night. In a moment, Act Two of Autumn Crocus, starring Walter Slezak and Carmen Matthews. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. Now, Act Two of the Best Plays production of Autumn Crocus, starring Walter Slezak and Carmen Matthews. Neither Herr Steiner nor Miss Gray was at breakfast the following morning. There was only the silent little woman who brought in my coffee. At the time, I attached no importance to this fact since it was Sunday and people usually slept late. It was not till later that I discovered that Miss Gray was not sleeping, nor was Herr Steiner. She had taken the climb, he suggested, and when she arrived, she found him waiting by the little shrine. Good morning, Miss Fanny. Oh, good morning. So you did not sleep too long, huh? No. You found your way quite easy? Yes. You were not too cold? Oh, no, not with a shawl. Thank you for leaving it for me. You look so nice in it. Oh. I think you should always wear it. <laughs> Why do you laugh? I don't know. Well, there must be some reason. Must there? All right, I'll find one. I laugh because this is morning and the sun is climbing... And because the air is so sweet and because Miss Fanny is wearing a big white shawl. Is that enough reason? I suppose so. <laughs> now you laugh. <laughs> what are your reasons? I haven't any. <laughs> then I make them up for you. I think you laugh because you are so high above the world and can look down on the village, still in its Sunday sleep, like on the picture at your home. Isn't that so? Yes. Tell me some more about your life in England. <sighs> well, there isn't very much to tell. Edith and I live together. I see. And when you go to school, the children, they are nice? Oh, yes, some of them are sweet. Though some of the big girls are rude and difficult to manage. It's nicest with the babies. <laughs> we have little singing games. They're fun. And do the little ones teach you or you teach them? Now you're making fun of me. <laughs> The other mistresses, are they nice? Oh, very nice, but rather old. All but the games mistress, but she hasn't much time for me. She's very modern. Are you not modern? Oh, no. Old-fashioned? Well, I, I don't think I'm anything, really. I think you're many things, and all of them nice. But go on. What do you do on Sundays? Can you walk in the country? Oh, not in Manchester. We have to take a train. <laughs> I'm afraid we don't do anything much but read... But sometimes somebody comes to tea. You have many friends? Only the other mistresses. No men friends, huh? No. Oh, there's the vicar, but he's going to retire this year. He's nearly 70. Your mother and father, are they... My mother died when I was little and my father when I was 22. That's why I have to earn my own living. They only left me 40 pounds a year. I see. And you are happy in your life? I suppose so. The time just passes. But then there are the summer holidays. Oh, they're wonderful. Last year we went to France. And this year you have come to Tyrol to climb the mountains. Look, see across over there up the top? Tomorrow we'll be there. Oh, but could I really climb there? Oh, yes, with me it's not very difficult. <laughs> what is that book you're carrying? Oh, Shakespeare. I've seen one of his plays in England, but I cannot remember it very well. It was uh, Juliet and Romeo. Uh, there was a balcony. Oh. 
<laughs> now I remember. That's why you laughed last night. What do you mean? When the nurse called, you said it was some play. I, I, I was just being silly. But Romeo was not on the balcony, was he? Oh, no, of course not. And you are not Juliet. She talked and talked. I didn't understand one word. <laughs> and me for Romeo? <laughs> I'm too clumsy. You're not clumsy. Oh, yes, I am. My wife is always telling me I'm too clumsy. Your wife? Why, yes. What's the matter? N nothing, I hear. Uh, I turn giddy. The air, we're so high. But we are not high enough to... <laughs> Fanny. You did not know that I was married? No. But everyone knows. I introduced her to you yesterday. Oh, no, the soup boiled over. But you have seen her often. She served the dinner with me last night. Oh, you thought she was a servant. I didn't think anything. I cannot understand. Everybody knows her. She's Frau Steiner here, Frau Steiner there. All the time people talk to her. We, we've only been here a little while, and I understand so little German. It, it doesn't matter anyhow. Oh, but it does matter. Oh, I have been mad. You thought... No, no, please. I, I didn't think anything. I was surprised, that's all. And the air getting up so early, I... I think I'll go back to the inn. All right. And you will stay with us? No. I mean... So that is how much it matters. <laughs> Sit down, dear Fanny. I'm so ashamed. You think I don't care? Do you? Very, very much. You mean you're just sorry for me? I love you. No. No, your wife. It, it's wrong. I know it's quite wrong, but it has happened. When did you know? Only just now, a minute ago. It is still so new I'm quite light in the head. You're quite sure? So sure. And you, Fanny, when did you know? Always. Always? I know it sounds silly, but... I feel as if I've always known. It is so at home in your heart. Yes. Oh, Fanny, you are so strange, so like a child, a flower. I'm afraid. Afraid? Afraid to kiss you. No. Fanny. Oh, please don't touch me. Oh, don't you understand? It, it's wrong. It's wicked. Your wife. Oh, why did you tell me? Why didn't you let me go? I could not. <laughs> When I saw you cared for me. But what is there in it for us? Oh, I don't understand. You're, you're good, you're kind, and, and yet you let this happen. Why did you come last night? To the balcony? I wanted to see you. But you didn't even love me then. Perhaps I did. Listen, Fanny. I will try to tell you all the truth. When you came yesterday, I thought you were most sweet. I wanted to be with you, talk to you. I did not think how much... Always I'm, always I'm happy with my guests, and with you more happy. And then last night, suddenly it was much more than just liking you. I felt I could not let you go away. But what did you think could happen? I did not think. One does not always think. One just lives. Fanny, I'm not bad. I did not plan it. I did not say when we are in the mountains I will make love to her. You thought we could be friends? I did not think. Each minute was a magic in itself. But last night, when you left me... I just slept. I see. <laughs> no, Fanny. You do not. Uh, you English are different. Always you are so free. Uh, last year there was a widow. We were a little, a little friends. A walk or two. She wished me to make love to her. You thought I was like that? Oh, no, no. But because of all these, I thought you did not... You did not mind about my wife. Did you make love to the widow? No. Only very little. You were not like them, but because of them, I did not understand. I did not enough take care of you. You forgive me? Yes. Now I must go. Where? Away. What else is there? I love you and I shall always love you. But what can I do but... Stay go? here with me. Now? More than ever now. You mean we can be friends? No. Then... We love each other. But your wife... She need never know. Fanny, you are so... 
So untouched, it's hard to talk to you, but I must. Today you have told me something of your life. I say it is not a life, no joy, no color. What I ask of you perhaps is wrong, but it is life. And I do not think it is wrong, not for us. It would be too beautiful. Think of yourself. You tell me you're 29. It isn't true. I'm older. I'm 35. Fanny. Well, that's scarcely possible. Oh, Fanny, Fanny, what does it matter? What does anything matter if we love each other? But we shouldn't, we shouldn't. I oughtn't to let you... Oh. I've crushed your flowers. It doesn't matter. What are they called? Herbstzeit, Lose. The timeless flower. And in English? I think they're autumn crocus. They're like the ones we have in spring. They are like you, Fanny. The flower of spring that blooms in autumn. Let us be happy in this dear September spring. We haven't the right to be happy. Oh, Fanny, Fanny. How can you love and not be happy? Would your wife divorce you if she found out? There is no divorce in our church. It's all so strange to me. Is this your wife's shawl? Uh, no, th that was my mother's. It is for you, Fanny. You shall take it with you, and when you wear it, you shall think of the time when you will be back with me. Come back? But of course. Listen, I have a plan. Every autumn you shall bring the spring back to me. Oh, I, I couldn't afford... But I'm quite rich. Oh, Fanny, Fanny. You must not be proud, not if you love me. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm just silly. You see, I've never loved anyone before, and now... Leave me a little while by myself to think. You won't change your mind. You will stay. Yes, I'll stay. Then I will leave you now, if you wish. Dear, dear Fanny. What is your name? <laughs> your Christian name? Andreas. Andreas. Is that right? It sounds most sweet. It is so hard to leave you, Fanny. I shall come back soon. Till then, Auf Wiedersehen. Auf Wiedersehen. It was one of those quiet, lazy Sunday mornings in Germany that I guess they have all over the world. Alaric and I spent the morning reading, and we thought everyone else had gone off to church until the older English lady walked into the living room. Oh, good morning. Didn't see you at breakfast. No, I overslept. I should think you did. It's nearly 12. I've been awake several hours packing. Oh, I see. Fancy spending several hours packing a suitcase. I had to pack Miss Gray's for her, too. I suppose you haven't seen her anywhere. No, she wasn't at breakfast either. She left a note saying she was going out early for a walk, but really she ought to be back by this time. She doesn't look as if she'd be much of a hand at mountaineering. Well, I can hardly believe she'd be foolish enough to go far, but uh, really, after her talk last night... What talk? Oh, nothing, really, but she seems to have fallen in love with the mountains. Oh, I really am getting anxious. I wonder if someone would go and look for her. Perhaps Air Steiner. Oh, everyone's at church. Well, I wonder then if I might ask you, Mr. Craven, to have a look for Miss Gray. Certainly. Where would you like me to start? Just outside the front door are three mountains to choose from. Ah, uh, yes, I suppose it is rather hopeless. Uh... Up, she'll turn up soon. But if we... Cheer up, she'll turn up soon. But if we miss this bus, we shall lose our train in Innsbruck. Oh, dear. Um, well, if Miss Gray does come in, would you or your husband be kind enough to tell her to come straight up to me? Certainly, but that isn't my husband. Oh, but I thought... I dare say you did. Many people do. Oh, I see. Well, I suppose it's no affair of mine. None, whatever. But we thought we'd just tell you. No false pretense, you know. Oh, yes, well... Uh... Yes. Uh, you'll tell Miss Gray when she comes in. Certainly. We make a point of telling everyone. I mean that I'm waiting for her upstairs. Oh, oh, that. Yes, we'll tell her. Thank you very much. Are you quite sure Herr Steiner's in church, Alaric? 
Well, he went with the rest of the family. Why? I just thought he also might have fallen in love with the mountain. Good Lord. You don't mean... Only that he seemed rather smitten with her pretty little school ma'am. Really? But even so, surely she would Oh, yes, she would. There are very few women who wouldn't if our charming Andreas took a fancy to them. He's very attractive. Now, look here. Are you attracted by that fellow? Rather. Thrilled to the marrow. <laughs> but don't worry, he isn't at all attracted by me. Hello there. Oh, how are you? Oh, quite better, thank you. I expect you're a bit stiff. Uh, well, not so very, considering. In fact, I, I rather thought of going for another little climb this afternoon. Only this afternoon, I shan't take any shortcuts. You know... I do really feel I owe everyone an apology for last night. Not at oh, all. Of course not. Oh, but my brother tells me that I was... Well, of course, I'm not very clear about it, but I, I suppose that makes it even worse. I... I wasn't intoxicated, was I? Good of Lord, Of course no. you weren't. Well, Edward says, and I certainly do remember feeling rather odd. Do you know, Edward doesn't think that I ought to drink beer. He's most upset about it. Nonsense. Everyone here drinks beer. Well, that's what I said. Everyone. Besides, I like it. You jolly well drink what you like. Oh, well, I, I wouldn't go as far as that. I, I suppose there aren't any English books here, are there? Well, we could lend you something, but most of ours are on psychology. Oh, I've always wanted to read a psychology book. Well, here's one that's fairly light. Ah, oh, there you are, Florence. I was just coming up again to see how you were. I'm quite well, thank you. I'm just going into the garden. These these young people are kindly lending me a book. Oh, oh, really? Oh, yes, mm, yes I hardly think it's the sort of book you like. What are you reading? I, I don't think you'd like that one either. Very uh, technical, complexes and such things. Are there complexes in mine, too? Lots of them. How interesting. I've always wanted to know what mine were. Uh, really, Florence, neither of the books is suitable for you. Then why are you reading one? Hmm? Well, because it, it's, uh, it's my duty to keep up with modern thought with so many young people in my charge. And what about my girl guides? It's no use, Edward. I shall certainly read the book. And you'd better come along to the garden and explain the bits I don't understand. Oh... Oh. Well, I say, you don't think she's really got a complex or an inhibition, do you? Don't you worry, Mr. Maine. No English lady who sits down on a mountainside and cuts her sleeves off is suffering from inhibition. It was well afternoon before the younger English lady came back to the inn. And one wouldn't have to guess more than once to tell what had happened. She walked as if she were in a trance. And it was only when she started up the stairway to confront her traveling companion that she seemed to return to grim reality. Oh, Edith. Fanny, where have you been? On the mountains. I left you a note. Yes, but you've been gone for hours. Oh, for heaven's sakes, get changed. The bus will be here in 20 minutes. I'm not going on the bus, Edith. Not going? No. Oh, you really are too trying, Fanny. We went over all this last night. You know we can't stay. You can't, but I can, alone. Fanny! I'm sorry, Edith. Well, I should think you were springing this on me at the last minute. You know I can't possibly leave you alone, and the bus will be here in a few minutes. Well, I can't go by that bus anyway. I haven't packed. I've packed for you. Oh, thank you. Oh, that was nice of you. But I'm not going. I've made up my mind... This is what I've been waiting for all my life. Fanny, I think you've gone stark, staring mad. You've never taken all this interest in mountains before. I've always liked mountains. But not to the extent of ruining our holiday, to say nothing of poor old Travers waiting for us in Venice. If it weren't for her, I'd give in to you, but as it is... But I... I don't want you to give in. I want you to join Travers. Thank you very much. But if I'd wanted to spend a holiday alone with Travers, I could have done it before now. What on earth would you do here by yourself? Walk and climb. You can't alone. It's dangerous. Well, not very. Besides, I, I dare say someone would go with me. But there's no one here for you to be friendly with. And you know how miserable you are if you're alone. I shan't be miserable. Well, I shall. Shut up in Venice with Travers. I can't think what's happened to you, Fanny. You're not usually selfish like this. Oh, I don't mean to be selfish, Edith. 
It's something important to me. I must stay. Must stay? Annie, where did you get that shawl? Herr Steiner lent it to me because it was cold in the early morning on the mountains. Herr Steiner, the innkeeper? Was he on the mountains too? Yes, for a little while. Did you go out with him? No, no, I just met him. By accident? Yes, at least not exactly. He knew I was going. How did he know? He... he suggested it last night. Why didn't you tell me? I left you a note. I couldn't tell you you were nearly asleep. Asleep? Fanny, were you talking to that man on the balcony last night? I thought I heard voices, but I was too sleepy to be sure. Were you, Fanny? Only for a few minutes. He came out on the next balcony. And you arranged to meet him on the mountain? No, I didn't. He suggested that I should go out on them. Ah, and then came to meet you with his wife's shawl. It isn't his wife's. Fanny. Oh, Fanny. Is this the reason that you want to stay? Because of this man? Did he persuade you to stay? No, I tell you, he's, he's got nothing to do with it. Now, don't keep questioning me, Edith. Leave me alone. Fanny, has he been making love to you? No. No. It's just no use you're going on. I, I won't answer your questions. You are answering my questions. Do you think I can't read the whole thing in your face? Don't. Don't look at me. It's nothing to do with you. Leave me alone. <laughs> You're hateful, cruel. Fanny, I don't mean to be cruel. It's, it's just that I'm so appalled. Oh, let me try to help you. Tell me about it. I'll do my best to understand. You, you've fallen in love with him. That's it, isn't it? Yes. And does he know? Yes. And does he pretend to be in love with you? It isn't pretense. Oh, well, perhaps he thinks he is. You're very pretty sometimes. What does he want you to do? Just to stay here with him. Don't you know what that means? Well, you can't be just friends with a man of his type. I don't want to be just friends. Then I don't know what to say to you. It would change everything, Fanny. You'd be different. You'd even look different. I'd only look happy. How about Frau Steiner? Have you thought of her? Edith, please. You're making it ugly. Sordid. It is sordid. Not what's in your mind, but what it entails. Deception. Stealing another woman's oh, husband. Edith. Becoming an adulteress. <sighs> All right. All right, I'll go. You've spoiled everything. Oh, Fanny, it's for your good. I'll, uh, I'll go and tell him. No, just leave. Don't worry, I shan't change my mind. Promise me. Oh, what's the use of promising? I promised him. But don't be anxious. You've finished everything. I think you've finished my whole life. Oh, my dear, don't be childish. Will you never grow up? No, Edith. I'll never grow up. Only old. So, you found your way back all right alone, huh? Yes. Fanny, what is it? What has happened? I'm going. There are only a few minutes left. Now, tell me quickly what is wrong. Edith's found out. She's made it all ugly and sordid. But she cannot make it that. This morning on the mountain, it was not ugly. No, that was beautiful. But don't you see? We couldn't always be on the mountains. This morning, nothing seemed to matter except that I loved you. But here, it's all different. Fanny, I cannot understand. If I thought it was for your good to go, I would not try to keep you. But how can it be right for you to go back to that life? Never to live or share the joy of love. You are still so young in heart. But one day you will grow old. Will you grow old with no memories? I shall have memories. Last night, this morning, the meadows were all misty, waiting for you, high on the mountain, with the world waking for the first time. I think I shall remember it when I'm dying. Fanny, my dear, my heart, stay with me. It cannot be right to kill anything so lovely. I love you so much. Even, even more than I knew this morning. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, sweet, don't cry. <laughs> See, I will help you, take care of you. Listen, all morning have I've been planning. Well, we'll make a little school for you in Innsbruck. You shall teach English there. I have so many friends who will be glad to send their children. <laughs> they wouldn't if they knew. But if I promise, I will not make love to you. It shall be a friendship between us, a loving friendship. <laughs> I will not even kiss you. But I should want you to. Oh, oh I cannot let you go like this. <laughs> if, you'll not, if you will not believe me about yourself, think for one minute of me. I love you. It is not like anything I've known before. Always there has been something beyond my life that I wanted. A dream... I did not know how to dream. Fanny, it is my love for you. I did not know it till now. Oh, Andreas, I must go. I will come to England. I will come to see you. No, no. But you do not understand, not to persuade you, just as a friend, just to see you. I will wait two, three years if you wish. No, it. no, I beg you not to, for my sake. For your sake. I shall have changed. Changed? Oh, not my love, but me. I, I want you to remember me as I am now, not not grown old. Fanny. It's all right. I shan't mind. Now. It's come. The bus. Sally, no, no. Let the bus go without you. Oh, there's so much I want to say and I can't think of it. Listen. Listen, it's all right. For you too. It would have ended. Now, it's there for always. For both of us. Sally. Please, help me to go. No, no, don't come with me. I've... I've taken the shawl. Is that all right? Of course. Leb wohl. Mein Herz. Mein Leben. Goodbye, Andreas. Auf Wiedersehen. No, Andreas. Goodbye. Goodbye. You have just heard the Best Plays production of Autumn Crocus, starring Walter Slezak and Carmen Matthews. And here once more is your host, drama critic John Chapman. I hope you've had a pleasant time, as I have. There's nothing for easy, relaxed pleasure like a good romantic comedy such as this one. It's much the best, of course, to have such skilled comedians as Mr. Slezak and Miss Matthews and the other ladies and gentlemen of our company to do the acting. For this kind of comedy isn't as easy to do as it seems. Our next best play will be a different kind of comedy. Rose Franken's sharply pointed, shrewdly observed play about American family life, Another Language. And another of our favorite comedians, Faye Emerson, will be in the leading role. Beginning with another language, our program time for many network stations will change to Sunday evenings from 8.30 to 9.30 p.m. Other stations may vary their schedules, and I suggest that you consult your local program listings. This is Chapman saying goodbye until our next performance. Autumn Crocus was transcribed and adapted for radio by Earl Hamner. Heard in the cast were Elaine Rost as Audrey, Robert Carroll as Alaric, Marjorie Maud as Miss Maine, Guy Spall as Vicar Maine, Irene Hubbard as Edith, and Lily Valente as Lisa. Best Plays is an NBC production supervised by William Welch and directed by Edward King. Your announcer is Fred Collins. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. Mm.